My name is Sylvia. Um, I actually work in the tech sector in San Francisco. And so my job is to use Zoom daily to communicate with my clients and, and anybody else I need to communicate with for work, as well as my personal life. I use it to stay in touch with friends throughout um, COVID, et cetera. So um, thank you for joining today. And hopefully I can help get some of your questions answered about how to use Zoom uh, in a little bit more of a high level versus a 101 class. Um, so jumping into our next slide here. Um, today, what we're going to be doing is we are focusing on the desktop laptop side of things. So this first one, um, all, and also many of the things we'll be discussing today, you will need a Zoom account for. Um, however, there are free Zoom accounts. It's easy to sign up um, and you just have to be logged into that account for some of the things we're going to talk about. Uh, throughout today, if your experience doesn't look exactly like what I have on the screen or what I'm talking about, don't worry. This could be due to the device you're using. Uh, this could be due to operating system of your computer or even the uh, browser version you have, um, or even the version of Zoom, yourself, Zoom itself. So uh, keep that in mind. So moving on to our agenda, as Kate was mentioning, we have a few different topics we'll be talking about logging in or not logging in and, and whether you are or not, changing your Zoom name, troubleshooting your audio, sharing your screen, uh, using breakout rooms. And then, um, so we're gonna start with logged in or not logged in. Um, and along those lines, one thing to note, um, you all have successfully started your Zoom meeting, obviously, because you're here. Um, one thing to note is you can always join a Zoom meeting no matter whether you are logged in or not. Um, there's multiple ways to do this. Uh, you will always click that link that you usually get in your email or in your calendar. And then you can either open the app itself or you can join from your browser. There's two options here. Um, so no matter whether you're logged in or not, you can join your Zoom link. That being said, certain features are only available if you are logged in. Uh, your name and profile picture, for example. Um, so if I turn off my camera for a second, give me one second to do this, you will see my profile picture. This will not show up if you are not logged in. Um, and if you've set your name as well, uh, so as you can see my name here, uh, that is based on your login. So if you've done that previously, you might see a different name if you're not logged in. Uh, virtual backgrounds and filters are different if you are logged in versus not logged in. So if you're not seeing your normal virtual backgrounds or filters, you might not be logged in. And lastly, host access. Uh, so this is if you are hosting your Zoom, uh, you will not be able to do things like start and stop the recording or use breakout rooms if you are not logged in. So yeah, um, and just kind of to tell, uh, or to be able to tell when you are logged in or not, Mac and PC are a little bit different. So Mac, you click, uh, that Zoom US in the top left corner of your screen. If it's not there, that means you're not in the app itself. So you'll have to click the app at the bottom. Um, the PC um, is a little bit different, or sorry, and then at the bottom, as you can see here highlighted is where you can check whether you're logged in or not. Uh, the PC is a little bit different. You actually have to be in the app itself um, and you will see either a window that looks like this to sign in, or you'll see kind of a window that has your information in the top corner. So our next topic, uh, changing your Zoom name. So this is uh, pretty straightforward and I'm going to teach one option for this out of many. Um, and I have highlighted the steps on the screen with orange arrows and numbers here. Um, and starting in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you will select the icon in Zoom, uh, in the Zoom toolbar that looks like two people and says participants under it. I know that word is a little small for some. Uh, and it's usually the fourth from the left icon. I know that sometimes that's a little bit different for everyone, but usually the fourth. Um, step two here, once you kind of get that right pane to open, um, you'll hover your mouse over your name to see mute and more buttons. Um, so you can see that kind of towards number three here, you're going to click the more button. And then there's a drop down menu that comes and you'll click rename. And it'll pop up a little pop up here that you can see in in step five, 
uh, and just type in whatever name you want. It can be as weird or not weird as you want. Um, and you can you even put your location in parentheses. It's, it's really flexible, which is nice. Uh, and to finish it off, you definitely need to click this box called rename at the bottom to kind of submit it and make it change. Uh, if you don't want to do that, or you're like, I didn't really mean to do this, you can click the cancel button. Any questions on changing your name? Uh, not on changing your name, but there is a question. On the last one? There is a question maybe um, we can take. If you're not logged in, can you switch to log in without losing the connection? Great question. Yes. So I'm going to go back for a second here. <clears throat> so for um, Mac on the, the left side here, it's literally just selecting this drop down and you can click sign in here uh, if you aren't logged in and you can still be on your zoom window as far as I know. Uh, for a PC same thing, but this window will be open and you just have to type in and sign in while you're uh, on your zoom meeting so yes is the answer for both it's just a little bit different of how to do it. It's a great question. Though. Thank you. I will move on to our next topic audio troubleshooting very exciting um so when we talk about audio troubleshooting i'm going to start with turning on or off your audio just very basic when you log into your zoom meeting um when you're first joining in the the leftmost icon in the zoom tool toolbar as well as a pop-up as you can see in this image here uh, will tell you to join audio um, the icon when it changes uh, to be a microphone instead of these headphones um, with that green arrow, that tells you that you've joined audio. If you still have the headphones with a green arrow, you have not joined audio yet and nobody will be able to hear you. So keep that in mind. Another thing to note here is before joining, you can always test your speakers and microphones just to make sure that they are uh, working properly. Uh, and then it's not bothering others when you try and do that. So always remember that you can do that here. Um, so the next thing to note is once you have joined audio, there's two ways here. You can either mute or unmute yourself. Um, so muting, for example, um, just it, it's interesting. The diagram is what your current audio is. So when there is no line, it means you're unmuted, even though the text below says mute. So the text itself is actually is what, going, what is going to happen when you click it. So that's the difference between the icon and the text there. I know it can get a little confusing, um, but basically when the line is through the image, um, that means you are muted, even though it says unmute under. So the first one, you are unmuted. The second one, you are muted. Uh, just to be aware, clear with that. All right, and along those lines, just talking a little bit about input and output. I know these are some scary words, so I'm going to break that down for you. Uh, microphone is your input. Um, luckily, Zoom actually, instead of using input, or I think they changed this recently, it now says microphone to our benefit. Um, this is how sound is going into the computer. Output, which is your speakers, is how the sound is coming out of your speaker or out of your computer. Um, so as you can see here, there's a few different options and I'm going to go into how to select these things. So switching audio input and output. Um, to switch to a different input or output, you just have to click this little up arrow or what's known as a carrot in the tech terms uh, that's next to this microphone icon in the Zoom toolbar. Uh, once the list pops up, you can select one option in the input list, which is your microphone list, and one option in the output list, which is your speaker list. And they do not have to match, which is really nice. Um, they can, as you can see, same as system is one of the options, but they do not have to match. So um, keep that in mind. And there's, you know, uh, usually you'll have a mix of things here, and I'll get into that in a second of kind of why you select one or the other, but these can be a variety of things. Um, I'm gonna point out a few options here at the bottom. Give me one second to go to my next screen. So 
uh, these options, you can test your speaker and microphone here. So as I mentioned before, you can test it before joining your meeting or during your meeting, or even bef like before you're logged into Zoom. It's really easy to always test your speaker and microphone and this can help you troubleshoot. Um, the second thing here is switching your phone audio. Um, if you're still after all of that troubleshooting with test speaker and microphone having issues um, and, and after making sure that you've joined with audio, uh, feel free to join or switch phone to phone audio, meaning you'll call into a phone number on your phone and use your phone as your microphone and speaker. Um, so keep that in mind as kind of a last resort. The last thing that I wanted to note here, um, most people aren't ever going to use this option. I actually do on a regular basis at, at my job, but um, it's leave computer audio. Um, so what this means is you'll go back to the first state that we saw with the headphones and the green up arrow. It just means that you're leaving audio and have to join again. Um, and this is to, in my world used so that if you have two devices near each other, such as a computer and an iPad or a computer and a phone, you don't have any um, issues with feedback. Um, so any of those loud noises or, or kind of hearing the same thing over and over again. Um, so that is how you deal with feedback if you have multiple devices on the same Zoom call in the same room. So one of them should leave audio. Um, cool. Any questions on that topic? Yes, um, Frank asks, can you have more than one audio feed, i.e. computer audio and phone at the same time? Great question. I think I just answered that. So yes, you, are, you can log into as many devices as you want in the same room. Uh, it could get a little hairy, but basically I highly recommend that if you are gonna do that, that you leave computer audio on all devices except your main one. Um, looks like we also have a hand raised from Frank. I don't know. Um, Frank, did you have some follow-up on that? Do you wanna go ahead and unmute? Yeah, so the follow-up is so, my question is, can I just log in once, but have two audios? So for Great example, question. I just log into the meeting one time, but I wanna set it up on my computer and my phone, just in case the computer drops off. Got it. Um, yes, you should be able to do that. But again, if you are going to use your phone, I highly recommend that you leave computer audio so that you're not getting that feedback. So at, you're, you're basically never going to have both on at the same time because it does cause feedback, if that makes sense. But you can call on your phone just as a backup um, for sure. So hopefully that answers the question. But basically for that, I, it's there's no way to have multiple microphones and speakers at the same time, unless you're literally logged in twice into, onto two different devices. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Frank, for the question. Any other questions? Just uh, there are. Just actually. More. Sorry, there. Are... Yeah, no worries. We're here, and might as well. <laughs> um, well, this is relevant to somebody. I was trying to answer this in the chat. Can you stop the chat box from popping up with a new chat message? Sometimes it's distracting or blocks the main screen. Um. So that's if you've already opened it. Is that correct? No, I think it's if you haven't opened it and it's popping up every time there's a new message. Got it. Um, I think you you might be able to answer that one better than I can. I am oh, not yeah. as knowledgeable on that. I was going to suggest a couple of things. One is if you open the chat, it might, if you're joining from a desktop, it might open in a separate window that you can kind of move around the screen. Another thing to try is going up to the view um, icon in the upper right hand corner and exiting full screen. It usually puts things like chat and participants on the side for you so they don't interrupt your view anymore. Great. Awesome. Uh, shall I move on? Uh, yeah, I think so. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, no worries. All right. We are jumping into screen sharing. Um, so this is where it's going to get a little more complicated, um, but hopefully everyone can keep up and I'm happy to answer questions. Um, so I'm going to start off with the basics. So there's three basic steps to take uh, when you want to share your screen, and then I will go into specifics in a minute. Um, so the first step here, which is the arrow at the top, um, is 
on the Zoom toolbar, which is usually at the bottom actually, uh, you will be clicking the share screen button, which is that green rectangle with an arrow in it. Uh, your second step is once the pop-up appears, you will choose whatever screen, whether that's the full screen, a specific device or a window itself, uh, and basically select that. And whichever is selected is highlighted in blue, as you can see here. Uh, and then the third step is you have to submit that and say share again, basically. Uh, I know that third one can always, it sometimes trips people up because um, it's like, no, but I already shared it. Um, so just make sure you click that third button there or that button there <laughs> as your third step. Um, so jumping into a little bit more about what these options are. So um, the first set of screens in this screenshot, you only can see one, but if you have multiple monitors, you're going to see a desktop for each monitor you have. Um, so that usually is what shows up as the first few options here. Um, and that just means it's going to share the full screen of that monitor. Um, so they everybody will be able to see your notifications, they'll be able to see you, your menu bar, all of your windows, whatever is on that screen. The next set here, um, so kind of white, whiteboard, iPhone, iPhone, uh, there's two options here. These are kind of device options. Oh, so whiteboard itself basically gives a whiteboard similar to what you'd find in a classroom, but virtually, and everyone can draw on it, uh, write on it, etc. cetera. Uh, and then the iPhones, these are two ways you could share your iPhone screen, uh, even if you're on your computer. Um, and it's really lovely to be able to do this, but I know that some people have Android devices. Sadly, at the moment, there is no way to do this with an Android device as far as I know, unless you basically log into your Android device separately uh, as a, a secondary and do the leave audio like we talked about. The last set of boxes that you're gonna see, similar to these three on the second row in this screenshot, are your windows. So anything you have open will show up here, as long as it's open on the screen and not minimized in your toolbar at the bottom of your screen. Um, so if it's open, you will be able to see your window. Um, the first thing to note is you have to have these open before you hit that share screen button. Otherwise, you will not see them here. So if you're like, why isn't my X window he not here? Um, that's why. You have to make sure that it's open before you hit that share screen button. Um, the second thing to note is Let's say you wanted to share um, your Google Chrome and you have a few tabs open. Um, you can totally within that window, if all the tabs are in that window, like go between tabs and people will be able to see your screen. Um, however, on the desktop, or excuse me, if you're just in a, in a window and you wanna switch to another window, you have to do that through here. You have to stop sharing and reshare. Um, however, if you're on the desktop option, everybody could see any and all windows. So just keep that in mind um, whenever you're sharing what you're sharing. If you wanna share multiple tabs, you can do that within a window. But if you wanna share multiple windows, you should definitely select desktop one or just know that you have to stop sharing and reshare each time. Cool. Um, any, let's see, let's move on. We also have at the top here, some advanced options. So once you're in that um, pop-up, there's a basic and advanced at the top here. So if you select the advanced, um, there's a few options here. I actually haven't used all of these myself, but I'm gonna walk you through them. Um, and the first one is just being able to actually share your slides, like what I'm doing now as background, uh, like a virtual background. So instead of, you know, my, blurry background, or I think some of the, the uh, librarians had specific backgrounds, it would be your slides, which is really interesting. Uh, again, I haven't tested this, as you can see, it's still in beta, so keep that in mind. Um, the, oh, and I believe for this one, it has to be in PowerPoint and can't be in Google Slides, which is what I'm currently using. The second thing here is a portion of the screen. So we talked about full screen, we talked about a window. Um, if you just want a part of your screen, like your menu bar at the bottom or your menu bar at the top or something like that, this is how you do it. You select portion of screen, 
share and it'll let you, I think it'll walk you through how to select the portion of your screen. Another thing that I really love, and this is why I come to the advanced menu myself, is the computer audio only. Um, so for example, um, I do a, a multiple times a week gym class so that I can see the gym teacher, they just share computer audio. They don't have to share any part of their screen. Uh, and this is great for any music or things like that that you wanna share with friends. For a video, same thing as kind of anything else we've been talking about, you're just sharing the video on the screen and that helps share the sound as well as the video. So keep that in mind. And then a content from a, from a second camera. So although audio doesn't work at multiple devices, like multiple ways on one device, you can have multiple cameras, which is really cool. Um, so as long as somebody has that second camera with you know, like a USB plug-in, um, that's how that works. The last thing to note here is at the bottom for any of these options, you can check box the share sound uh, with it. So if you don't want to, if you want to not just share computer audio or sound, you can share your screen and the sound as well. So that's another thing to note. Cool. Um, I think any other questions on this topic? There was a lot covered. Looks like we got a hand raised from Doris. Uh, we do, and we have one in the chat. So let's okay. go ahead and uh, do this real quick. I've observed some people trying to share their presentation that has audio, and they have to get out of share and re-enter share. Do you know what might be behind uh, that? Yeah, so actually that's a really interesting thing. You do not have to get out of your, or stop sharing to share the sound. So if you, for example, are in, this and you select your desktop or one of your windows um, and forget to click share sound here, you actually can stay sharing. Um, and I'm just going to remind myself, you won't be able to see this, but um, in the top bar where it kind of says at the top, you know, you're sharing your screen, um, there is a way to, uh, if I remember correctly, I think it's under more. Um, so the three dots on your Zoom toolbar, uh, it says share sound. So I'm going to actually click that right now. And you'll see that there's a little audio button or icon that shows up in that green bar um, at oh, the top. Yeah. There it is. So I didn't have to stop sharing my screen uh, or whatever I was presenting. You can still have audio. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then Doris, do you want to go ahead and unmute? Thank you. Um, if I have a slide I want to present and also music, but they're coming from two different sources, is that possible? Totally possible. Yeah. So share sound, what share sound means is it's coming from the computer. So as you can see here in my screenshot, I had Spotify open as well, uh, or you might have another, you know, Google Chrome window, for example. Um, yes, so any sound that plays will be okay. played through your speaker. Now, keep in mind though, you know, for example, at work, I use something called Slack, which is an instant messaging program, or you might have Facebook Messenger. People will hear those sounds too. Um, so make sure to have those closed or make sure to mute those uh, if you want to do something like that. But yes, when you share sound, you share the whole computer sound, not just uh, whatever window or app you're in. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Great question. Oh, and Sylvia, there's another great question in the chat. If yeah. you, um, have, when you share time. a video, the host can give audio comments simultaneously. How do you adjust the sound volume from the two sources? Oh, interesting. Can you read that one more time? I, there was a lot out there. <laughs> yeah, when you share a video, the host can give audio comments simultaneously. So you're sharing a video and you mm -hmm. want to talk over the video. How do you okay. adjust the volume from the two sources? Great question. Okay, so there's a few ways to do this. Um, one is in your Zoom settings. Um, so the Zoom settings itself, you can turn down how much audio you hear from the other participants. Um, I believe you might be able to turn up and down your audio too, but I, that, I don't remember, so I apologize on that one. The second way to do it uh, is let's say you have Spotify open, for example, Spotify itself has a separate audio um, audio bar from your computer audio. Um, 
now, for example, a video, I believe QuickTime might have this, but if you're like in YouTube and uh, YouTube has it, but certain uh, apps do not have the option to do that. So just keep in mind, um, but I would highly recommend doing that. Um, hi, Erica, thanks for drawing, annotating. Um, and I think the last option is just your, your computer audio itself. So sometimes I recommend if you're gonna be doing that, headphones help a little bit. Um, just to kind of make sure you're able to hear and they can hear you better um, because it's the sound is being shared through the computer versus just through a microphone or speaker, if that makes sense. So those are kind of the three things to consider. Um, <laughs> Wendy, sorry, closing announcement. Wendy would like to know how a video is shared on Zoom. Yeah, um, so a video can be shared in multiple ways. Uh, you can select your desktop just like and and have the video on the desktop. You can select the application of the video or as I showed in the advanced tab here, there is the option to share an actual MP4 video or uh, mov mov video MOV, whatever it is. Everyone. Yeah, so there's multiple ways to do it. Uh, and with all of those options, I highly recommend that you click the share sound button. Uh, I think that this one it automatically will do it for you uh, in the advanced settings, but anything else, you will definitely have to share your computer sound. Cool. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Uh, there are. I'm trying to piece out one of them. Um, do you have any recommendations for headphones to use when zooming? Well, great question. Honestly, most headphones work whatever you feel most comfortable with. Um, going back to quickly our audio thing here, you will see all of the options in this microphone or speaker section, depending. I'm currently using AirPods. That's just because I have them. But I also have um, uh, corded headphones that I plug into my computer. I also have uh, Bose headphones that are corded. Um, and then I have a Bluetooth headset. So lots of options. Um, nothing in particular. It's whatever you feel most comfortable using. Um, all will work. Great. I think that might be it for now. Why don't we um, keep going forward? Yeah. All right. We're moving into our final topic here of breakout rooms, which is very exciting. So starting with what breakout rooms are and why we use them. Um, so breakout rooms are exactly what they sound like. They are separate rooms in which separate groups of people can have separate conversations. Um, it is literally as if you had multiple rooms in a space, but it is a virtual space versus a physical space. Um, so just to give an example of, uh, or a few examples of when breakout rooms can be used, uh, I've used them for trivia groups. If you have different uh, groups for trivia, as well as conversation topic groups. Um, and as I mentioned, just before this, that we will use them for our practice room for different topics as well. So keep that in mind. Um, so note to use this feature, this is one of the features you do need to have an account. Again, that free account is totally fine. Um, but if you're using a company account or, or some ad where there's an admin like I have, uh, you might need to have this feature turned on by that admin. So keep that in mind if it's not that free account or a personal account. And lastly, you must be the host of the meeting. You will not see this icon if you are not the host of this meeting and you are not logged in. So keep that in mind. Um, and I'll be talking about how to set these up in a second, as well as what you as participants will see. Um, so yeah, this is the little breakout room icon. So we're gonna start there. Um, basically you will click this icon um, and it's, I think two away from the right uh, on your Zoom toolbar, looks like four little windows. When you click that, a pop-up will come up um, and you'll see a few things. So first you have to choose how many groups you want, which is breakout rooms, how many rooms you want. Um, this will be based on the number of people you have or the topics you have. Um, and then you choose this by clicking the drop down box here, these little arrows, and selecting the number you want. Um, the second thing you have to do uh, there's multiple options available of how you can set up your breakout rooms. Uh, so the first here is assigning automatically. 
meaning exactly what it says. It will assign people into the rooms randomly and automatically based on the number of people and the number of rooms you choose above. Um, the second is assigning manually. Again, sounds like what it is. It means that you as the host will be assigning who's in each room. Lastly, which is what we will be using today, and it's actually really fun to use, is um, this let participants choose the room, uh, which lets them choose based on what their interests are. And we will use this for the practice rooms this afternoon. So I'll be walking through what you will see as a participant in a minute. Um, but the last step here is, again, similar to sharing your screen, uh, you have to click create. Uh, so don't forget that. Um, cool. And it does show, just to note, uh, how many participants will be in your room based on who's in the meeting and how many rooms you have. So just be aware of that little note at the bottom of your pop-up. So once you hit create, your rooms are not created yet. It's very confusing, but they're not created yet. Um, they're created for you, but you have not opened the rooms for everybody else. Um, so before starting your rooms at this stage, uh, you get the option to kind of choose your settings. So I call this like the settings stage. Um, so once you've kind of created the rooms, how do you set them up? So uh, first, if you hover over the room itself, um, give me a second to, come on. there it goes. If you hover over the room itself, you have the options to rename and the options to delete that room. Um, you can also start assigning people if you chose the manual assign um, option. And the other thing to note here is if you want to add a room, that's what this button does, and recreate uh, basically means resetting the rooms. So not only if you've already signed people to them, you can reset the rooms and those people will be removed from all the rooms, but also uh, the names of the rooms, if you have renamed any rooms, will get completely uh, back to default. So what it currently shows here. So just keep that in mind. Um, next, what did I see here? So uh, the last piece is this little settings cog. Again, things here are a little too small. I've blown them up a little for us today, um, but there is a little settings cog here. It doesn't look clickable, but it is. And it'll pop up a little, a second pop-up that you can see here. Um, and this allows you, again, to choose if you want to allow participants to choose a room or not, allow them to return to the main session at any time, and you can automatically move all part assigned participants into breakout rooms. This means when you hit that open all rooms, people will go into the rooms. I don't like to do that. It's kind of uh, jarring for participants, but uh, these are the basic selections. I don't usually touch them. Um, the second piece kind of under the line here is how the room closes. So you can auto close them after a certain set number of minutes and you can start closing the breakout room with a set time. Um, this countdown, I personally, again, keep it at the default. 60 seconds is usually a good amount of time to let participants in the rooms kind of stop their conversation and come into the main room again. Um, and I think I forgot to mention the main room is already or is always still available to anybody, uh, even if they're in the breakout rooms. Uh, so it's, it doesn't go away. That is one of kind of the rooms. It's just not a breakout room itself. So from there, I just want to make sure the last piece here. So when you click open all rooms, uh, I just wanted to make it clear that your bottom bar here will change. It'll show broadcast message to all. So you can say, hey, I'm going to close the rooms in X amount of minutes, or you've done five, or have five minutes left, whatever you want to write. Um, do not send links in these messages. People cannot open them. Uh, to send links, you need to do that by going into the rooms and put it in the chat. Um, so keep that in mind. And then close all rooms versus open. So once you hit open all rooms, one of the things to note here uh, you cannot change the rooms after this point. Uh, so you can't add, you can't delete, you can't recreate. Uh, you will have to close all rooms and recreate them as, we, as I just showed you all of those steps. Um, so that's the one thing. It's not as forgiving as screen sharing with the sound as I mentioned earlier. 
so I think the next thing I want to show is what participants will see uh, once you hit open all rooms. So participants today, this is specifically if you let them choose what room to go into, will see all of the rooms in a list in a pop-up. And it says breakout rooms in progress and it'll give you the rooms with the names and it'll let you join if you hover over the room and you click the join button here. So that's what you guys are gonna be doing today based on your interests. Uh, if you have any difficulty with this, um, please just wait for us and we'll help you get into your room. Um, and I think the last piece is just a reminder that this is for laptop and desktop. All of these pop-ups are on a laptop or desktop. You will not see this the same way if you are on an iPad or a phone. Um, so if you are struggling today, please be aware of that um, and please let us know and we can put you into your room uh, and help you with that. But that is what you'll be doing today. You'll see a pop-up and be able to join whichever room and topic interests you. And if you're done with that topic and wanna to move to the other one, feel free to do that. We are giving you the flexibility today. So a few more things. When you are a participant in a breakout room, if you keep the default settings that I showed you, uh, all participants will be able to leave their meeting rooms, or excuse me, their breakout rooms to come back to the main meeting Zoom. Um, it says leave meeting in a red box at the bottom. Once you click that, it doesn't actually kick you out of the meeting. It gives you two options here. One is to leave the meeting fully. So that's gonna kick you out of Zoom uh, and the meeting. And one is to leave the breakout room. So just be careful when you're, you're deciding to leave your breakout rooms today. Uh, if you wanna keep switching around, uh, leave the breakout room, do not leave the meeting. Um, if you leave the meeting, you have to go through the whole opening your Zoom link again. Um, let's see, I just wanna make sure I got all my notes. So the other thing to remember is when you as the host are closing the room or rooms, it gives participants that set time to leave. Um, so they have the, in the default, the 60 seconds to leave the room, so they can do it in this format. However, um, it will, and sorry, it'll give the participants kind of a notification saying that they're closing and here's the time countdown clock. That being said, at the they can leave any time within that period or even before, but once the 60 seconds or whatever that set time is um, when it's finished, it automatically pushes everybody back into the main room. So you do not have to click on anything. You do not have to worry about that. Uh, if you are worried, I just wanted to let you know, it does automatically push everybody back into the main room once that timer is complete. So yeah, a few other things here. Um, oh, sorry. So, oh, sorry, this was to show you, yeah, basically whatever that countdown timer was, once you click all, close all rooms, it gives participants that pop up and will notify them that they have 60 seconds to either do this action of leaving the meeting or the breakout room themselves or the meeting, uh, or uh, they will automatically get pushed back at the end of that countdown timer. So, that is our topics for today. I wanted to thank everyone for uh, the great questions so far.